Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can't get to heaven through Buddha. You can't go through Krishna, Muhammad, Allah, Gandhi. You can't go in by your own good works, for the Bible says that Jesus, and Jesus alone, is the only way to God. Get saved, church! Get saved, world! For the day of the Lord is at hand. I think this is just a broadcast. See, some of you have been tuning into so much Bible prophecy, you've become numb to it. It doesn't even phase you. Oh, the United Nations sought to do a split on the two state. Oh, what's next? What's for lunch? How, how's the dog doing? How's Toto doing? My, my pet rabbit called Woof Woof. How, how's your pets doing? Oh, you, so you're conditioning yourself to take the beast, the system, right? See, some of you are going to trip out what I'm about to say. The beast system is going to come in so subtle. Actually, it's coming in already so subtle. We've reported on it. But see, we get new viewers all the time. We've reported on how subtle the beast system is. It's wretched. It's ungodly. It's nothing short but the subtlety of the serpent from the Garden of Eden. Uh, uh, thousands of years ago when he made, when he, he beguiled Adam and Eve. He, he caused the, the woman to be deceived and then she led her husband to be deceived. And now they became, they, 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 there was a, a judgment that was proclaimed on both man and woman. But I give praise to the Lord God of hosts. For sending the Holy One of Israel, the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world, to be our redemption, to be the propitiation of our sins, to deliver us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son, Jesus the Christ. The beast system. It's coming in subtle, folks. Some of you don't even see it. But the Lord's going to open your eyes right now. You ready? Don't be afraid. You ain't going to start seeing crazy stuff. But you're just going to receive understanding and wisdom. And all you're getting, get understanding. Don't tune into these broadcasts just trying to fill yourselves up to be fat in the spirit. And you're hoarding it all. You're still going to work. You're not telling anybody to be saved. You're not telling anybody we're living in the last days. Thus you offend somebody. And then you're coming back and you're tuning in to open your eyes, people, secretly. Because nobody wants to know that you're actually tuning in, pastors, uh, ministers, uh, churches. Because i got a lot of secret folks who like to tune in. And you guys are well known. That's okay. It's okay the Lord says that the beast system is coming in so subtly it's already being established right underneath our noses do you see my nose my nose it's right underneath our noses you all remember when Pope Francis came to visit America he came uh, during the time of the Shemitah, during the time of the Four Blood Moon Tetrad. Very exciting for many folks. You had CNN worshiping the Pope on live TV. Worshiping him. They were uh, repented, but not onto God, just onto the Pope. Oh, Pope this and oh, Pope that. And see, somebody may have a problem with that because you may say, well, what's the problem? Isn't he like God's ambassador on earth? You know, isn't he the one who represents God? Listen, folks. We only have one high priest, and his name is Jesus the Christ. He is the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. We go to no man to confess our sins anymore. Jesus rent the veil. And we have a high priest who intercedes for us morning, noon, and night. Worship God. Stop worshiping man and worship God. Anyway, when the Pope came in, there was a lot of worship of man. And a lot of people didn't notice it, but he came in with the gospel. Now, those of you who tuned in during that time, you did notice it. You, you noticed it because we reported it being led by the Holy Spirit. And we interpret it. We, 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 we were led by the Lord to speak the word and your, the eyes of your understanding were open by the Holy Spirit. He came in with a different gospel. He was invited to the United Nations to speak before the entire globe. Not just America, but to the entire globe. They had him tuned in from nation to nation, sea to sea, country to country talking about a gospel but it wasn't the gospel of jesus christ it was a different gospel 
Some called it the gospel of climate change, and I would say it's correct. He definitely brought in a climate change gospel. But I'm going to go a step further. He brought in a different gospel, a strange gospel, but it's an end time gospel concerning an apostate uh, state of the world that we're about to see unfold. That gospel is the mark of the beast doctrine. Now, some of you may say, now, wait a minute, evangelist. I tuned into that United Nations speech and I heard every word. I didn't hear him say anything about a mark of the beast. I didn't hear him say anything about Antichrist or uh, he looked very nice. He had all white on. He spoke very, you know, he spoke very softly. You know, he spoke like a lamb, right? Or he looked like a lamb, maybe even spoke like a dragon. But, you know, I, I just, I, I, he seemed, it was all well. Where are you coming up with this? The gospel that he brought in again was not about Jesus Christ. It was not about salvation. It was not about living in the last days. It was, it was not about any of that. It was talking about saving the planet. Saving the planet. Listen, I'm all for recycling. Come on. I don't like plastics in the trash can. I really don't. I have two trash cans on purpose for the sake of not mixing the two. Because I don't want our oceans and the whales getting plugged up with a, a water bottle. But something strange is happening in these last days. Again, it's the subtlety of the serpent to bring forth the mark of the beast. Who here likes pets? Woo! Come on, Evangelist. You're not going to go there with my pet dog. Oink, oink. <laughs> You will not go there with my goldfish, pit bull. You will not go there because I love my animals too much. All right. All right. Well, the Pope came in with his gospel of climate change. You know, save the planet, save the world. He kept on calling Earth Mother Earth. Uh, we have no Mother Earth. It's just Father God. Okay. But he kept on calling this Earth our home. The Lord says that our home is not on this earth. We are just but sojourners, uh, pilgrims traveling through. Our home is a kingdom of heaven. The Pope was saying that we have to go out of our way to save the planet. That the trees are dying. The elephants are dying. The beasts of the field are dying. Uh, the, the air is getting all smoggy. You know, China, listen. I, I want to say all that he said is, is, is fact. Is it truth? That's a different story. But I'm, I'm going to go, I will say it was fact. Because we've reported on the headlines. China smog is out of hand. It, the smog is so thick, they can't see but a few feet in front of them at times. And it's gotten so bad that now the latest business venture is not selling a, a typical, you know, you know, maybe a, a type of food that's very popular among the Chinese society, you know, among the Chinese people. It's not about even seeking to gain more land in the United States, in which they're very good at, by the way. It is now selling air. <laughs> Cans of air. See, some of you are like, come on, evangelists, you are full of hot air. And I say, no, I'm not. You have people in China that are now selling cans of air. They're getting it shipped in, folks. They're getting it shipped in from Nebraska. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Wyoming. Areas around the world that they could get fresh smelling mountain spring air and they sniff it in the midst of their smog infested nation. Is there animals wasting away? Are they dying? Absolutely. Is the earth in trouble? Absolutely. I'm talking about the beast of the field. Just listen again. What Pope Francis said, this gospel that he brought in, the, the, the statements he stated were fact. We've reported on it. We've reported on mass animal deaths. I got a headline speaking of, of a recent mass animal death of killer whales that are dead. They washed up dead in South Florida. Scores of them. Scores of them are dead. This is not the only headline. We have given you so much list of mass animal deaths. It's, 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 it's mind numbing. It could be mind numbing with how much animals are dying every day. Name an animal. It's been mass animal deaths on that particular animal. And I mean that. So anyway, you have the Pope, you know, saying we got to save the planet, we got to save the earth, we got to save the trees, we got to save, uh, you know, we got we, 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 we to save society. We got to put ourselves under and allow earth to be over. But very specifically, the beast of the field. Somebody may say, okay, man, I think I know where you're getting. Are you telling me that the beast... Am I going to have the mark of my dog on my right hand on my forehead? Is it, is it going to be my goldfish pit bull? What's going on here? The Antichrist is conditioning the minds of those whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life to care 
for creation rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Go with me to the book of, Re to the book of Romans very quickly. Romans chapter 1. We're still talking about Jerusalem. This all ties in together, folks. The book of Romans chapter 1. The book of Romans chapter 1. Now, I understand that Facebook could hear us, but you can't see us. Apparently, we're showing green on the screen. Right? So... If you want to see us live, you can just simply log on to our website, www.openyoureyespeople.com. We are live on air right there, and you can just simply tune in live. Romans chapter 1, I just want to read, I want us to read here. Romans chapter 1, we'll read starting with verse 19, uh, verse 20. Romans chapter 1, verse 20, it says here, For since the creation of the world, please go with me. Don't sit there and have your Bible and not flip the page. Please don't do that. I'm not... You know, I'm not entertainment. I mean, I'm not there in the flesh with you, right? But you need to do your own due diligence. <clears throat> being a student of the word and not just hearers only deceiving yourselves. Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, the world knows God. There's mental assent. They did not glorify him as God. They knew of him. They heard him through the religions. They heard him through the Christians, through the Buddhists, through the Muslims. They heard him. Doesn't really matter. No big deal. He's some out of space, far away God, if he even exists, right? Although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Nor were they thankful. But became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And changing, or hear, hear me, uh, verse 23, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. And then it goes even further. And birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to the uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped, hear me, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. In these last days, there is a worship of creation rather than the creator. God takes worship very seriously. We just read in the book of Revelation the proclamation of the three angels in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through 11. And I'm not going to reread it again. But the, Lord's, uh, gave, the Lord Jesus Christ gave a very specific proclamation for the angels to sound. And one of the key words here is worship. Verse 7, it, sa it says, uh, Fear God and give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment has come and worship Him. But then you go to verse 8, or verse 9, excuse me, and the third angel followed the two first angels saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, would you believe that many of you are being conditioned right now to worship the beast by your own pet woof woof? Now listen, please, before I get any emails, I'm not saying that your pet woof woof, your goldfish pit bull, or, you know, your kitty cat donkey is the mark. I'm not saying that. Please don't, 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 don't do that. Don't send me any emails. It's not, it's not what I'm saying. The, the cats, the dogs, the goldfish, the, the little mousies, all that stuff, they're, they're blessed. The Lord created creatures, but it was never to be worshipped. God created the creatures. We can read that. He blessed it now. He blessed it. We can read it in Genesis chapter 1, verse 21. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Amen. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply for the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And then in verse 24 it says, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle, 
and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So listen, God made the creatures. He loves the cattle. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it thereof. He spoke. <laughs> Come on, he, he allowed a donkey to speak to one of the prophets that made him go mad. The prophet that was trying to curse Israel ended up being in a way cursed himself by hearing a donkey speak. So please know God loves your pets. God loves the animals. He loves them. However, there is, we have, there is a line that has been crossed in these last days by the subtlety of the serpent that has allowed many in these last days to worship their pets, to worship animals, and to really put it in a nutshell, worship the beast. Now listen, again, am I saying... So you're telling me that having a pet now is a mark? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that there's a conditioning of the mind right now. The conditioning of the mind is to prepare you to take the mark of the beast. The beast system will be ruled and reigned with an ideology, with a false doctrine, and a false sense of saving the planet. That in order for us to save the planet, in order for us to stop the death of the trees and the oceans being polluted and the air being polluted and the deaths of all these mass animals, because listen, make no mistake about it, mass animal deaths are on the rise. You have now mainstream media finally picking up the articles that we've been reporting on now for several years here on Open Your Eyes People, along with other saints who've been doing their job. They're just starting to pick it up, but I know why. It's not even for the right reason. It's to condition the mind. Because the first thing that people hear when lion, what was that one lion that, that got beheaded by the one guy in Africa? Lion, um, Cecil, Cecil the lion. Uh, you had a, an Amer I believe, I believe he, was, he was an American dentist. And, you know, he went to go to Africa on some kind of expedition. And something that they typically did in Africa, they would offer for a certain amount of, 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 of a price for anyone who sought to hunt a beast, in this case was a lion, to capture it, kill it, and as a souvenir, behead it and take it home with them. So the dentist paid his way, did his thing, and well, it was part of the hobby. It's part of the game. And uh, well, that made national news. And what happened? All, oh, everybody, you know, a lot of people, not everybody, because I wasn't included in that mess. There was a lot of people who wanted to see the man who beheaded, who killed Cecil the lion, to be killed himself the same way. They said, how dare you kill Cecil? How dare you hurt Cecil? How dare we uh, stone him, crucify him? And they were on a witch hunt. The man had to stay out of the U.S. And finally, when he did come into the U.S., he came in so secret because he had a death list upon him. People were seeking him to kill him because of Cecil the lion. And no, and, 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 and no sooner than that, Within days of each other, and I'm not exaggerating, you can look it up. Within days of each other, you had another, another Cecil that came out. And an unprecedented murder of sorts. But it got a different reaction. You had the president of Planned Parenthood, whose last name is Cecil. I, I'm trying to remember the first name, and it's not coming up right now. But Cecil is the current president of Planned Parenthood, and it was the same week that the videotapes came out about babies being auctioned off, body parts being sold, the heads beheaded, uh, literally being killed in the womb. And when if they came out alive, they killed them while they were still breathing, which was against the law. You're not supposed to do that. And so the videos came out. The outrage was minimal. And instead of saying Cecil needs to be taken up to court and judged righteously, justfully, lawfully. Now we have to say Cecil, the Planned Parenthood president provider, from getting scorned and mocked. She's giving a help to people. She's providing a service to women who is just not ready to have a baby yet. That is part of the beast system. Hear me and hear me good. Make no mistake about it. What Pope Francis, I, you know, nothing personally against the Pope, but I'm just using him because he's, he has a main influence right now with helping spread this new gospel of the mark of the beast system. And so are churches, by the way, in these last days. You have the Pope and others stating 
We got to save the planet. We got to save the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, the creeping, crawling things. Save the water. Listen, I'm down for, for again, doing our part to recycle. But they've, there's another step. This is a conditioning of the mind. There has been a worship of animals. People worship their dogs. People are having sex with their cats. It's out of hand, folks. And if you're not going that far, you just may say, well, I have a dog to help me release, you know, be be under control with my anxiety. I don't want to, they help me with my post-traumatic stress disorder and they make sure, they, they help me not to uh, uh, be overwhelmed. It's my comfort. Well, the Lord says, listen, I sent you a comforter, my Holy Spirit. You have reduced it to a dog. I've never sent a dog to be your comforter. I sent my Holy Spirit to be your comforter. Somebody's got to hear me because I know somebody's getting offended right now. There's no need for offense. Jesus said, blessed are those who are not offended because of me. Don't be offended because of Jesus. He loves you. He came to set the captives free. To heal the brokenhearted. Read Luke chapter 4. Not, I mean, don't go there right now, but just for those of you who are getting offended by this word. There's a conditioning of the mind. You got the, the little commercials with the animals all looking sad face. All, everybody's got puppy dog eyes. Even, you know, the, the birds, whatever they're offering on these shows now so that you can give to their little min, their organization to help save the pets, right? And they have a little sad song and the dog saying, God has a little sign saying, will you take me home? Will you feed me? Will you help me get a Christmas sweater? They have all of this, you know, to help like pull the heartstrings, right? And that, that, listen, there's nothing wrong with pulling heartstrings. I, I, I don't care about that. What matters is a worship, the worship of the creature rather than the creator. So how does this link in to the mark of the beast? And I'll get back to the scriptures about the two-state solution or the dividing of Jerusalem. It relates to the mark of the beast because when the Antichrist comes on the scene, he's not going to tell you to take the mark of the beast or be beheaded. He's not going to say what I'm about to offer you is to, you know, basically sell your soul to, 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 to the devil, to Satan, and, to, and then to perish for all eternity in the lake of fire. He's not going to come like that. They're already conditioning the minds around the world saying, you want to save the animals, don't you? You, they're priming for the Antichrist to come on because he's going to come on with the gospel of saving the planet. The mark of the beast will be for the sake of saving the planet. That's where borders will be erased. Currency will be out because he's going to come in with the new gospel of currency. Instead of different nations exchanging different currencies, he's going to bring forth a one world currency. He's going to help bring so-called peace to that because of all the strain of, of, of the currencies. A lot of, a, a, a lot of nations are under bankruptcy. They're under the buckle of collapse. They're about to collapse because there's not enough money. Uh, Venezuela is a perfect example of that being true. Um, he's also going to bring in a one world religion. And it's all going to be under that new system. The beast system help save the tree, help save the wildlife, help save the animal. And the Antichrist, listen, you thought Hitler was smooth with his words. And he was. Uh, he, he was able to rally a nation around him. The Antichrist is going to rally the world. And he's going to use the heart strings of every, of, of every man, woman, and child whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life to all of a sudden fall in love with planet Earth. Listen, there's nothing wrong with, 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 with helping the planet. Uh, by doing your part to recycle, but I'm talking about something very specific that you it will you will miss it if you didn't see it being led by the Holy Spirit. If your names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you are thinking I'm crazy right now mentioning all this because you thought the mark of the beast was going to come in so obvious, and it's not. It's going to come in by the same subtlety of the serpent that happened in the Garden of Eden thousands of years ago. Is the same subtlety of the serpent is going to take place in these last days for the people to be conditioned not only to uh, to receive him that beast the Antichrist, but to receive his mark and, 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 and the image on their right here on, and, and on their forehead. All for the sake of saving the planet. And it's not even, the planet's not going to be saved because the Lord says he's going to burn it up. The devil's a liar and the father of all lies. He's not going to look like the devil. The Antichrist is not going to look like the devil. The Antichrist is not going to smell like him, even though he stinks. The Antichrist is not going to sound like the devil. As a matter of fact, he's going to sound like, uh, he's going to sound like Jesus. And it's going to be like, wow, Jesus came to save our planet. Jesus came to finally give us relief of the smog in China, to stop the mass animal deaths, to stop war, to stop, uh, you know, death, to stop all this, all this destruction. He's going to come in with a gospel of peace and safety. And the Bible says that when he comes in, when, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. Your name must be written in the Lamb's Book of Life because if you were to read in Revelation, Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, 
Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 reads, All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names are not written whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. Your salvation doesn't come in making sure you go to church every Sunday, every Sabbath, observing the Sabbath, making sure that uh, you, uh, you, know, you, you acknowledge your parents' faith, making sure that you uh, go to church every Christmas, making sure that you wear a cross around your neck. That's not how you're going to be saved in these last days. None of it. You're going to be saved by one thing and one thing only, only, the blood of Jesus. You're not, please hear me, please hear me. You're not going to go into, before the throne room of God, come that time, and stand before the Lord and be told what's the password. There's a lot of nonsense taking place in these last days. A lot of stuff speak being spoken, right? Even the donkey had more wisdom when he spoke to the prophet who was losing his mind. You have a lot of nonsense being spoken. Well, just when the time comes, I'll just ask God to forgive me real quick. Forgive me, God. You won't be able to speak. When his day comes, you won't even be able to stand. You, the, 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 your bones will rattle and shake. Whatever the worst shake you've ever had in your life because of zero degree temperature, because of shock, won't even compare to what you will feel on that day. you got to be ready now. There won't be time to say, God, forgive me. There won't be time to say, oh, well, I got this down packed. And when I go before him, I'll just say, God, I know the password. Jesus, I know the password. The password is Jesus. The password, heaven. The password, one, two, three, four. No. You're not going to be asked a thing. In order for you to even stay in heaven, in order for you to receive the kingdom of heaven, in order for you to be, be saved, when you are before, when you are before the great God, Jehovah, He's going to be looking for one thing and one thing only. You want to know what that is? It's not going to be your good looks. It's not going to be your bad looks. It's not going to be whether you wore deodorant that day. It's not going to be whether you, have, you read your Bible that day or whether you went to church that Sunday. It's not going to be whether you were good or whether you, whether you think you were bad. He's going to be looking for one thing and one thing only. You want to know what that is? The blood of his son, Jesus Christ, covering you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. See, I know you're tuning in to me right now. And I know you see me with this little frilly thing and you, you, my hair is done, my makeup, and you don't see anything else outside of that. But if the Lord could just open your eyes just for a mere second, you see that I'll be covered with the blood of Jesus. You will see the glory of the great God of Jehovah around me. You will see that I am one of his end time service to proclaim the word of the Lord in these last days so that you will be saved so that your names will be written in the Lamb's book of life. You won't be looking at what's behind me what's on my bookshelf, what she got what kind of nail color does she got. None of that matters what matters is that he is proclaiming the word of God to you so that you can be saved. Your, your lives can be healed. Your names be written in the Lamb's book of life and you'll be covered with the blood of Jesus Christ because that is what he's going to be looking at in these last when the time comes because we're living in the last days open your eyes people with evangelist Anita Fuentes bringing breaking world news magic bible prophecy all the latest headlines confirming the hour which we are in